on Britain's military help to Ukraine and on reinforcing NATO allies on the Russian border, the government has had, and it will continue to have, Labour's fullest support. But ministers must now move from ad hoc announcements to more systematic support. And that's why I've been arguing for ministers to set out a full 2023 action plan on military, economic, humanitarian, diplomatic assistance. Because this will help give Ukrainians confidence in a sustained supply to them. It will help urgently ramp up our own industry. It will help others to do more. And above all, it will signal to Putin that things will get worse, not better, for Russia. Because I say this, we must judge ministers on their actions and not on their words. And since the invasion, there has been no new money for the defence budget. None. There was no new money for defence in Kwasi Kwarteng's £160 billion mini-budget. No new money for defence in Jeremy Hunt's autumn statement. In fact, as the Conservatives have crashed the economy, weakened the pound and sent inflation soaring, these pressures have squeezed defence budgets even further at a time when threats are increasing. And of course, it's not just how much you spend, but how well you spend it. And over £5 billion has been wasted since 2019 alone in poor MOD procurement. And this is failing British troops, it's failing British taxpayers. So, like you, we look forward to the budget next month, when the Chancellor has promised, and I quote, the Prime Minister and I both recognise the need to increase defence spending. And I think when we look back at the IR, there were many positives which we need to preserve. Britain certainly needed a statement of UK grand strategy post-Brexit. We certainly have great strengths to draw on. So we should have the national ambition to become a science and tech superpower by 2030. The IR rightly said state threats to the UK are increasing and diversifying. It identified Russia as the most acute direct threat and it identified China as a systemic competitor. This designation given to China should stand. It's well grounded. It's consistent with our allies' approach in NATO. There were serious flaws in the IR. It was trumpeted by Boris Johnson as a national tilt to the Indo-Pacific, economic, diplomatic, trade and military. So there was no vision for the UK's leading role in NATO. Conservative ministers could barely bring themselves to mention the European Union. So by taking defence and security out of the Brexit negotiations, Boris Johnson has left a Europe-shaped hole in British security strategy. It was heavy, heavy on the go-it-alone view of global Britain. So there was insufficient recognition that Britain is always a bigger force for good when we act with allies. Labour accepts Brexit. We will not be rejoining the European Union, the single market or the customs union. But the Tories' post-Brexit blind spot on Europe must be corrected and we must rebuild relationships with our European allies to make Brexit work. This is why Labour will seek a defence and security pact with the European Union and new defence agreements with leading European allies like Germany. On NATO, Britain's security strategy must be NATO first. The first priority for Britain's armed forces must be where the threats are greatest, and not where the business opportunities lie. This is in the NATO area. Europe, the North Atlantic, the Arctic. However, our Indo-Pacific military commitments need realism. British armed forces are ill-served by leaders pretending we can do everything everywhere. Especially 
as over the last 13 years, UK full-time forces have been cut by over 45,000. One in five of our surface Navy ships have been scrapped and more than 200 RAF planes have been taken out of service. And just as we would not expect Japan or Australia to deploy much of their military to Europe, nor does it make sense, especially at this moment, for UK forces to devote an increasing share of their scarce resources to the Indo-Pacific. So we need to shift parts of the defence industry and our MOD procurement onto an urgent operational requirement, onto an urgent operational footing, both to support Ukraine in the long term and to rebuild UK stocks for any future conflict. 